Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share some fragrances with you that are just like under the radar, they're completely slept on, they don't get a lot of attention, but they're fantastic fragrances that you absolutely need to try. And I also wanted to share with you guys a really amazing sale that's going on at Ana Luisa Jewelry. You guys always ask me about my jewelry and what pieces I'm wearing and where I get them. And most of the time it is from Ana Luisa. They're running their Black Friday sale November 18th to the 29th. So it's their biggest sale of the year. You buy one and you get one 60 off. So for example, the earrings that I'm wearing, they're my favorite earrings. I've been looking for crawlers for so long and these crawlers are like the perfect dainty little crawlers the cuffs that i'm wearing i love that they have like layers of little diamonds they have pieces basically for everyone they have things starting from 39 dollars, and now with the sale it's even cheaper all my necklaces are from there like all the gold ones all of them are from Ana luisa i got the little safety pin necklace it's did you guys know it's good luck to wear a safety pin? So I decided I'm gonna get a necklace with a safety pin so I can be stylish and still have my safety pin. So it's like a good luck hack that I'm hoping works. So yeah, they have this adorable little safety pin necklace. Then I always like to layer it with like a plain one that's a little bit longer. All of the necklaces, same thing, buy one, get one 60 off. So you can layer all the necklaces to your heart's desire. I'm I'm obsessed with their necklaces and they don't tarnish. I have necklaces from over a year ago that I keep on a jewelry stand that's out in the open. They haven't tarnished, they haven't discolored, they haven't at all anything. Like they still look pristine. So I'm really, really impressed with their quality and it's all carbon neutral. You guys know it's all carbon neutral jewelry, which is really important to me. They're environmentally friendly. Any carbon emissions are offset in other means. So that's something that i really love about the brand so i definitely recommend that you guys check them out for their black friday sale and pick up some nice pieces it's all super cute dainty jewelry they are very kindly sponsoring this video and i wanted to make sure you guys know about the sale since you do always ask me about the jewelry so don't miss out on that and now we can move on to the fragrances the slept on amazing fragrances that some of you guys i guarantee you have never heard of some of these so we're discovering new things today. By the way, some of these are gonna be really budget friendly. Some of them are niche, some of them are mid range. So we've got sprinkles of all the things in here. We've got sprinkles of all the things and I'm gonna start off with Bulgari Omnia EDP. You've heard me talk about the other Bulgari fragrances. I don't think I've ever really focused in on this one. I'm not sure why because it is a gorgeous fragrance. I do wear it often and it smells like a chai tea kind of like I think there's a note of masala tea and it's basically like a creamy spicy tea. It is a really beautiful slightly sweet creamy tea scent. I think this is perfect for the fall. This has a hint of these nice warm spices but it's also just very like lotiony, creamy, refreshing. It's not like a sharp spice. It's a very creamy spice. It is truly a creamy fragrance. There's a really nice cardamom note in here as well. There's cinnamon, there's white chocolate. So there's like lots of really nice smooth spices and a creamy, creamy base. I really love this fragrance. I think you can find it around the $60 mark. So for that price, I think it's an absolute steal. It's a really underrated, beautiful fragrance, so that is one. And the next one is Kelly Kalesh from Hermes. You guys saw this in my Fragrance Buy haul because Fragrance Buy just had their anniversary sale. I had the EDT, like little tiny bottle, got the EDP, and I love it so much more. And either one, Kelly Kalesh, either the EDT or the EDP, they're both beautiful. The EDT has grapefruit. This one is more of like a powdery, rose with leather. It's stunning. It is such a classy, refined, beautiful feminine leather fragrance. I, I absolutely love this. It lasts all day. It just smells like you're wearing really high-end leather goods and you have like a powdery rose fragrance on you as well. Very, very bougie. I love Hermes as a designer fragrance brand. I think that they're up there with like Chanel and Dior. Like they're very good quality. 
and they're pretty underrated, especially Kelly Kalesh. I don't hear a lot of talk about Kelly Kalesh. I hear here and there about the Merve collection and that one's very, very good as well. But this one slept on heavily and you guys definitely, especially if you like a leather note and you like some powderiness, you have to check this one out. Next up is a refreshing clean fragrance and it is Anjou Démon, Le Secret, and this is the Eau de Parfum. Givenchy in general is a pretty underrated house. I don't even need to spray this because I, I spray it so much that it's very much embedded in the cap and in the sprayer and I can already smell it. It's quite a long lasting fragrance and it's a very refreshing tea scent with cranberry. It has jasmine as well, it has musk. I've described this one before. I mentioned it once in my favorite tea fragrances video and it smells to me like those sugared cranberries that Eastern European treat. I used to eat them so much as a kid. They're like these little cranberries covered in powdered sugar. So good. And this is exactly what it reminds me of. It's like little candied cranberries. It's delicious. It's nostalgic. It's such a beautiful fresh fragrance and it also like lasts all day. It lasts all day for me. A really hidden gem, underrated and the bottle's really beautiful too. Mine's almost done. I'm gonna need to get a new bottle very soon. I saw this at Sephora. For a minute, I thought it was discontinued, but it doesn't look like it is. I still see it everywhere. So it's still very readily available. Then we have Kayali Musk. Musk is my favorite from the whole Kayali lineup. And it is so underrated. Like all the other ones get a lot of hype. The Elixir gets hype. The Vanilla gets all the hype. All the new ones that came out, but I don't hear very much about the musk. And me as a clean musk lover, like a clean fragrance lover, I like a nice clean scent. I like a nice clean, sexy white musk. This one is doing all the things for me. It has a nice clean musk. It has a nice refreshing floral facet. There's freesia, there's lotus. It's a fresh clean musk, like a fluffy white musk, but it's very, very sexy too. For me, this is my favorite one from their whole collection. I find some of the other ones a little bit too overpowering, can't wear them on a daily basis, can be obnoxious sometimes. This one does all the things for me. Once this runs out, I'll be definitely getting a full 100 ml bottle. It's a stunner and it's definitely a really underrated one from that house. Now, the next one I'm willing to bet you guys have never heard of. Most of you guys probably have never heard of this fragrance. It is an Icelandic perfumer. It's a niche fragrance. It's called Andrea Mack Soft Tension. So the brand is Andrea Mack and it's called, the fragrance name is called Soft Tension. And this fragrance is a tea and musk fragrance. So there's a note of mate, there's musk, there's freesia. It smells like green tea leaves, like crushed up green tea leaves. It's exactly what it smells like. The musk is a clean musk, but it's not like a fluffy clean musk. It's just a, it's something between a Narciso musk and then a clean musk. It's something like that. It's not overly plushy or anything like that. It's more about the tea and you definitely get that freesia. It works really, really beautifully in this fragrance. There's moss, there's cedar as well. This one I reach for a lot on rainy days. This has become one of my rainy day scents. It does have something Narciso-esque about it, but it has a really beautiful, like, imagine you made green tea from like crushed up green tea leaves, like loose leaf green tea, a good quality loose leaf green tea. And you just pour that hot water, like that scent of that fresh loose leaf green tea is very much what I'm getting in here along with the freesia and, and the muskiness. I think it's absolutely beautiful and this one you can get at Raffinade Perfumery. I haven't seen it anywhere else. They definitely have it. I'm gonna link everything in the description for you guys. Next one is for the white floral lover. If you love a bubblegummy tuberose, you like some peachiness, this one's for you. Mancera Wild Python. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of Mancera fragrances in general. I find a lot of them have a synthetic note, like Instant Crush is a no-go for me. I do like Velvet Vanilla. Those are very popular ones. I don't hear a lot about Wild Python. And for a white floral lover, like I'm in, when I'm in the mood for a white floral, I want it to be a bubblegummy tuberose and this is it. Like this delivers. This is very much along the lines too of like, Good Girl Gone Bad from Killian, like that peachiness. 
except this is almost more candy this is almost more candy-esque it really packs a punch it's not a delicate soft like hardly there fragrance this one is quite strong it'll last all day like the performance is out of this world on this one so that's really really good I don't get that weird sharpness that I get with a lot of Manceros. This one actually smells really beautiful. I think too, if you like that sort of tuberose, if you remember Madonna, the white bottle, the Truth or Dare? Yeah, Truth or Dare. I have it, but I haven't used it in ages. That sort of bubblegummy tuberose, that's what's in here with a nice like candied peach almost. Like it's sweet. It's sweet. It's very unapologetic, but it's lovely. So out of the Menceras that I have and that I've tried, this one's one of my like definitely preferred ones and I don't hear it talked about very often. So definitely check out Wild Python if you like a tuberosey like bubble gummy fragrance. Then Eternity Intense from Calvin Klein. It's almost, it's almost ridiculous, right? But it's such a good fragrance. Like it's nothing like the original Eternity. It's nothing like Eternity Summer. This one smells like a waxy lipstick. Like think of like a lipstick that's crushed up that has a little bit of sweetness to it that's buttery. It smells like that. It really like, it's almost like mouthwatery, like waxy buttery smell. It smells very sophisticated. I think if you're missing fragrances like lipstick on and those types of like lipsticky, irisy fragrances. This one's a really good budget alternative. It smells a lot more expensive than it is. It really does. There's also a nice vanilla in here. It's a great like cold weather powdery scent. This one is, it, it has a sweetness to it and it has like a richness and a density that I think is perfect for the cold weather. I'm gonna be wearing it a lot this winter. It's addictive to smell it. Like I almost want to eat it. It's it's a really interesting scent. So definitely check out Eternity Intense. I think you can find it for like $30. It's ridiculously cheap and it smells very high end. Like definitely smells a lot more expensive than it is. At least that. Next up is a fragrance from actually an affordable niche house. At least here in Canada, it's affordable. I see them for under $100. I actually bought mine for about 60. This is L'Intrigante from Parfums d'Orsay. They come in these like old world charm bottles. I love the presentation. This one, I was intrigued by the note of camellia in here because I had been on the hunt for a nice camellia fragrance. It also has carnation. It has suede, juniper, like really beautiful scent. It has a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of that like coniferous smell. Suede, like gentle, smooth suede. It turns out I really like carnation in fragrances. I do not like carnation as a flower. I don't like how it smells. I don't like how it looks. Don't know why. Just never like carnation. Love peonies though. Very similar type of look, but anyway, that's a little bit of a sidebar. Turns out I love carnation in fragrance. It has a little bit of the spiciness. It almost makes me think of cinnamon, the, the spiciness that carnation gives. There's also myrrh in here. You guys know how much I love myrrh. Lots of really interesting notes. Problem with this fragrance is longevity and projection is poor. Like I'll give it about, okay, you gotta spray a lot, spray on clothing, spray on your skin, you'll, you'll get a couple hours. I don't know if like I stop being able to smell it after that time and maybe others can still smell it on me, but it's such a beautiful fragrance. I wanna keep spraying and spraying and spraying. That is the little bit of a, a little bit of a red flag though is the bad performance. So heads up on that but the scent is stunning. Then we have L'Instant de Guérin. This one I have in the older presentation. I prefer the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette is also nice. This is a nice fluffy vanilla. There's honey in here. There's nice florals. It's sweet. It's, it's a very elegant, sweet, fluffy, vanillic fragrance. I think it's extremely underrated. There's people going out and spending over $300 on Killian's Voulez Vous Coucher Avec Moi. This one smells to me better, very much along the same lines. That sweet floral scent is very similar. I like this so much more though, and it's way more affordable. I don't know how the new presentation compares to this. I haven't smelled the newer bottle, 
I imagine it's the same, maybe a little bit more watered down, but it's such a nice, like another cold weather scent, a very elegant, mature, but not like, not mature in terms of it being like outdated. It's not an outdated fragrance at all. Very elegant, like grown up, but sweet, fluffy vanilla. I love this like fluffy plushy vanilla that it has. It's also a little bit powdery. It has the iris, it has benzoin musk. I think it's definitely worth checking out if you guys haven't checked it out, but I do prefer the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette in the opening has a little bit of that ammonious kind of sour smell. This one doesn't have any sourness to it. So go for the Eau de Parfum, that's, that's my preference. Our second last one is Hane Mori. I know a lot of you guys are big fans of Hane Mori because when I was talking about Ylang and Gold and how much I love Ylang and Gold from Mikalef, I know a lot of you guys are fans of Hane Mori and it is a beautiful fragrance. It's great for the budget, like it's great for the $30, $40 mark. It's actually fantastic. It has this custardy, sweet, vanillic scent. There's no vanilla in here. There's almond tree, there's ylang. I don't get strawberry and all those berry notes that are listed in the opening. To me, it's like a obscure, fruity, custardy, sweet, vanillic, woody scent. It smells a lot like Ylang and Gold. Yes, it really does. I did a comparison of the two. I'll link it up here for you guys. Um, for the price though, like I prefer this better than Chopard's Cashmere or Cashmere. I prefer this. I prefer it over Vanilla Fields. Vanilla Fields to me doesn't smell anywhere along those lines. Like this one, it has something special in it for sure. I like that custardiness that it offers. The longevity is so-so for me. On my skin, it's it's so-so. But again, for the price point, can't complain. This is really underrated and it really does smell a lot like Ylang and Gold from M. Mikalev. That That is undeniable. And then our last one is Mademoiselle Azaro. And this is like, it's so random, but it's actually really good. It's a nice fruity floral. The packaging is pretty cute. I think the packaging is actually quite adorable so this one is actually the mademoiselle azaro l'eau très floral so it's very floral it's actually not that floral it's more of like a fruity fruity floral this one reminded me a little bit of gucci envy me it had it it does it smells like the body wash of gucci envy me and i really like that this has a note of quince and rhubarb it also reminds me a little bit of L'Imperatrice from Dolce & Gabbana. It smells along those lines. This is more apple-y. Like, I guess Quince smells a little bit apple-y. It has a nice green facet, not green like the stem of, of a leaf or grass or anything like that. Just a nice, refreshing, clean green scent. It's not anything mind blowing and out of this world, but it's somehow very addictive. It's very pretty, very girly. And if you're looking for a nice fruity floral and you like fragrances along the lines of like Bright Crystal or even like L'Imperatrice from Dolce Gabbana, I think you would really enjoy this one. It's very, very pretty, nice fruity floral fragrance and definitely under the radar. I think it also is like about $30. So that is my whole list of fragrances that are completely slept on, that are excellent fragrances you guys need to check out. Of course, I have more. I'm gonna be doing more of these lists and I'll help you guys discover all kinds of different things. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what fragrance you guys think is completely slept on that really needs a lot more attention and that we all need to check out because I'll definitely check it out if I haven't already. So that is it for today. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa for their Black Friday sale for the buy one, get one 60 off. That is the biggest sale that they have in the year. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.